26, the resurrection of Jesus Christ has taken place. What happened at the time of resurrection? Who saw the resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord? And then tonight I have a question for myself and for every one of you. Do you believe in the resurrection Amen. of Jesus Christ our Lord? Yes. Do you believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord? Yes. Amen. Yes, we believe. Seeing this, the first reading, we are going to quickly have it. Luke chapter 23, verse 55. And the woman also which came with him from Galilee followed after and beheld the sepulchre and how his body was laid. The word of the Lord clearly says, very importantly, in Luke chapter 23, verse 55. One more time, hear it carefully. And the woman also which came with him from Galilee followed after and beheld the sepulchre and how his body was laid. My brothers, my sister, in Luke chapter 23, verse 55, the Bible clearly says that women came down to see the body of Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was laid in the tomb, in the grave. And the word of the Lord clearly says in Luke chapter 24, verse 9, Luke chapter 24, verse 9. And returned from the sepulchre and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. The Bible clearly says in Luke chapter 23 and Luke chapter 24, the women went to the grave. Martha went to the grave. Mary went there. Mother of Jesus, Mary was there. Mary Magdalene was all the time there. Yesterday also we read the scripture that when we were reading the scriptures, we heard about Nicodemus. Nicodemus was there when the body of Jesus Christ was laid down from, or brought down from the cross. It was brought down from the cross. Nicodemus was ready there to give them the ointment, give them the myrrh, give them all manner of ointment to apply upon the body of Jesus Christ. Because once he had come to Jesus and he had asked Jesus, Jesus, what shall I do? Because I want to be born again. Whether I can go back to my mother's womb. And Jesus said, Spiritually, one has to be born again. Don't murmur about this, that you should be born again. And after that, Jesus said unto him, you shall be born again in the spirit and in the water. Wonderful, those who have prepared their hearts, mind and bodies to be born again or to be water baptized. Prepare yourself. You're not doing anything wrong. You are doing wonderful thing, what Jesus has taught every one of us. In Gospel of St. John chapter 20, verses 9 and 10, the Bible clearly says, For as yet they knew not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. The Bible clearly says many did not remember the scriptures. Many did not remember the scriptures, what Jesus spoke to them. Why they are calling scriptures? Why they are not saying, Jesus said like that, and we have to hear, and we have to believe. Why they don't say? Because Jesus himself is the word of God. According to Revelation chapter 19 verse 13, Jesus himself is the word of God. Therefore they were not saying, Jesus said, that the Bible clearly says, the women went to the tomb to check up Jesus is there or not. After that, Peter ran to the tomb to check up along with John. And they ran because these ladies, these women, Mother Mary, and Mary, and Mary Magdalene, and other Marys and Mother of Joseph, they get the message to the disciples. Why are you locked up in the room? Why are you hiding yourself? Why are you fearful? Come and see. Our Lord is not there. His body is not there. He is risen. Then Peter runs. John runs. And all of them, they go to the tomb. And they found the tomb empty. In Matthew chapter 28, verses 9 and 10, the Bible speaks about. And as they went to tell his disciples, Behold, Jesus met them saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. The word of the Lord clearly says, Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell, that, tell my brethren that they go into Galilee and there shall they see me. Luke chapter 24 verse 30 and 31. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and brake it and gave, gave it to them. 
and their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. John chapter 21 verse 22 and 23. John chapter 21 verse 22 and 23. Jesus said unto them, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Then went this saying abroad among the brethren that that disciples should not die. Yet Jesus said unto, the, unto him, He shall not die, but if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Now I quickly go to the word of God again. The Bible clearly says when Peter John ran to the sepulchre, they found the tomb empty. They found nobody there, but they found the cloth was totally and cloth was totally in order, kept there. Two angels were in the tomb, and the two angels were there. And when the women were questioning them, did you see our Lord? Did you see our Lord Jesus? Whom and who has taken him? And the Bible clearly says, the angel of the Lord spoke to them. No, have you not heard? Do you not know the scriptures? That the scripture has said that he will rise up above again on the third day. And he is no more in the tomb. He is risen. He is alive. He is not in the tomb. And the word of the Lord clearly says, Peter seeing that again on the same day, he went to meet the other disciple. Then the two men, according to Luke chapter 24, the two men, those who are walking towards Emmaus, they were talking about, see how they crucified our Lord Jesus. Such a wonderful man, he opened the blind eyes, made the lame man jump and walk, made, made also paralytic people to come back to life. Many were sick and he healed them all. He was such a simple and such a loving and compassionate Jesus was on the earth. And when they were talking about Jesus Christ, they never understood. Jesus also was walking with them side by side, hearing the talk, what they are talking. And the word of the Lord clearly says, two men, when they were walking towards Emmaus Road, Jesus also walked with them, heard their conversation, and he asked them, about whom you are talking? About what you are talking? You are talking about whom? And they said, there was a good man who was crucified at the cross of Calvary. They hung him on the cross of Calvary at Golgotha and he was hanging there. And then later, because of the voice, they understood that it was nobody else but Jesus was speaking unto them. My brothers, my sister, probably tonight Jesus is with you. Amen. Probably see Jesus is seated with you. Amen. Probably Jesus is around us here. Amen. And you are not able to see. I'm not able to see. But surely you are going to experience his power tonight. The Bible clearly says all the apostles, they were up there and they were gathering in the upper room of Peter's mother's house. At that time, Jesus went there. According to John chapter 20, verse 24 to 29, when Jesus went there, all the disciples were gathered there. And they were surprised. Rooms were locked. Doors were locked. Everything was sealed. Sealed means completely nobody can enter. And Jesus comes there miraculously and started talking to them. And they were surprised, saying that our Lord is risen. Our Lord has come to visit us. Oh, whatever he has spoken has come to true. And they wanted to touch him and see. But during that time, Thomas Didymus was not there. According to John, Gospel of St. John chapter 20, verse 24 to 29. The Apostle John, John the Didymus was not there. And when he was not there, the Lord God Almighty, the Lord Jesus, who is resurrected, when he was speaking to the disciple, he understood what was the mind of Thomas Didymus. He came back the second time in Gospel of St. John chapter 21. And when they were there, he met them and he asked Thomas Didymus, you come here. Come to me, he said, and put your hands here and put your hand to the side. I'm the same one who was crucified, died on the cross of Calvary, was buried in the tomb, and I am risen. You are seeing me and believing, but yet those who are not seeing me dying on the cross, and yet believe, they are greater, they are blessed, Amen. they are victorious, they are successful. Heaven belongs to them, those who believe in Jesus Christ of Nareth, yet we have not seen him dying on the cross, but we believe. Bible clearly says, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1-2, Seven. First Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 to 7. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, 
by which also ye are saved if we keep in memory what i preached unto you unless ye have believed in vain for i delivered unto you first of all that which i also received how that christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures and that he was seen of cephas then of the 12 and that he was seen of about 500 brethren at once of whom the greater part remain unto this present but some are fallen asleep the bible clearly says even cephas and all the high priest came to do because they heard the rumor which was spread in roman government in the roman history there was no such history that anybody is risen and paul is writing about that he has been dead for our sins but he is risen according to the scriptures my brothers my sister religion does not continue with our religious practices but the scriptures scriptures must be known unto you scriptures must be known unto us we shall hear the scriptures always because scripture will make you wise scripture will give you every blessing scripture will give you healing to your bones and body and spirit of god will be stir in your life spirit will give you know energy to the soul and your soul shall be ready at the time of death it shall be quickened and go to the kingdom of heaven the bible tells it that's what paul said that 500 500 brethren they saw the risen savior he was the one who was knocking and said kill him he also saw and many other Pharisees and Pharisees were surprised that Jesus was nailed on the cross his legs were nailed on the cross he was buried in the burial tomb the stone was rolled on his grave the tomb was sealed with the tomb the tomb was sealed with a great stone and Jesus is alive they were all surprised and they were all thinking about everywhere here and there according to the scripture that we read the bible says many saw along with James the disciple who gathered you know, along with other disciples and came to see Jesus Christ our lord many saw Jesus Christ ascension according to acts chapter 1 many saw the ascension of Jesus Christ our lord the Jesus when he was with the disciple talked to them about living with them for 44 nights and 44 days remember Jesus did not just rose up from the grave and went to bed to the heaven and never came back no Jesus went to heaven came back met the people met the disciple met the women those who came to check him up so also Peter John and also other disciples he was also there with every man who talked about Jesus Christ our lord and finally in Bethlehem he has been seen by 500 brethren and many papers and high priests and Pharisees have also seen him and the final the word of god clearly says according to acts of apostles many saw jesus christ ascension and they were waiting there and seeing and many were questioning that what are you seeing there and they said we are seeing our lord has been taken to heaven alive they said how he's been taken alive same way he's going to come back Amen. same way he's going to come back Amen. and the word of the lord reminds us one important thing never to forget never to forget roman government sold roman government and roman soldiers and many enemies of jesus christ started a rumor saying that his body has been stolen go and tell everybody and in jerusalem people shall know that his body was stolen but it was not so he was risen the bible clearly says though it was uh, many those who witnessed here and there among israel jerusalem they were saying that jesus body has been stolen but that many saw jesus alive walking with them talking to them eating with them eating fish and bread eating meat and many were shocked not only that this is the greatest history and the history in the roman government and roman record and roman history which never happened before that jesus christ of nazareth is risen and he is alive he is alive Amen. they only talked about that his body has been stolen but yet afterwards they came back and they understood and the entire roman government in the history in the roman history and in the roman record it has been mentioned that jesus is alive Amen. the bible tells says all the disciples of the early church all the disciples of the early church went into the cities including roman government and all of the governments that they knew they started preaching the gospel they started teaching the gospel not only that 
They went and told them, the tomb is empty. The grave is empty. Jesus is no more in the grave. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. And finally they said, Jesus is alive. And after that, they were proclaiming this gospel to the entire nation without any fear. And now it is spread all around the world that Jesus is alive. Today we are celebrating not that Jesus died and not risen again. No, we celebrate Jesus died for us. And he was buried for us. And he rose again on the third day to prove that he is the risen Savior. He is alive. Today so many years have passed. 2022 years have passed and it's according to the history, the demonstration of Jesus Christ the murder is going all around the world. They are remembering the resurrection of Jesus Christ. They are celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And Matthew chapter 28, it says, all manner of resurrection is mentioned in all the four gospels that nobody can erase, nobody can say it is a default or fault, nobody can say it is written by religious people, but it is the true gospel, it is the risen Savior, it is the risen Lord, and He is alive. The Word of God speaks about the resurrection. The Word of God speaks about the resurrection. The resurrection was unexpected even. It was not expected by some of them. Many Christians were knowing that Jesus is dying on the cross. They came to witness. Many also knew that he has been punished because the Roman government is against him. Many understood that Jews and Sadducees and Pharisees and high priests, they wanted to kill him. And Roman government crucified him. When this was happening, the resurrection of Jesus Christ of Mary was not expected. Because they were believing the power of Roman government. They believed the soldiers of Roman government. They said, Jesus is just looking like an ordinary man. And all his disciples are also ordinary. They have no armor with them. They have nothing with them. How can they fight with others to bring the body of Jesus Christ back again? They had the doubts. But the resurrection of Jesus Christ and brother, for many, it was unexpected even. Nobody expected. The Roman government was saying that they had done what was given unto them as a task. Nobody will see this man again. But the Bible clearly says, and Paul writes wonderfully. Paul is a good writer about his resurrection. And he writes wonderfully that many of those who did not expect, when they saw, they were stunned to see his resurrection. Many were doubting whether he is saved Jesus. And then they started seeing his hands and his sides. Many were doubting and followed him, seeing that where this Jesus is going. Is he true God or whether he is a ghost? And ghost does not have flesh and bones. Paul is saying the ghost does not have flesh and bones. And Jesus had flesh. Jesus had bones. He sat down with the disciples. He ate bread. He ate fishes. He ate meat. And he said to them, if you have anything, bring it. I will eat it. He was in the flesh and bones. And Paul said, who can reject his resurrection? Though it was unexpected even, but nobody can reject. First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 to 8. The word of the Lord clearly reads like this. First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 to 8, or 3 to 8. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. This is what is very, very important that Paul says. Paul says, for what I have received, I pass unto you as our first importance that Christ died for our sins. For I delivered unto yes. you first of all that yeah. which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that, he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. The word of the Lord clearly talks about, and what Paul is saying from verses 3 to 8, for what I have received I pass on to you, as of Christ, as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the 
scriptures. Remember, my brother, sister, you must have a Bible every home. Every home must have a scripture. Every home must have a Bible. Every home, you must be able to have a Bible. Every heart must receive Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and Lord. Without this, you cannot go and see Jesus Christ in his heaven. Bible claims say, Jesus Christ always says to you, if you want to come to heaven, you must know me, you must have me, so that you can see me, and through me, you can see my Father. And therefore, Jesus Christ of Nazareth and Paul has given this witness to every one of you. What is that witness? The witness is, you must have the scripture. You must know the scripture. You must follow the scripture. You must hear the scripture. By hearing the scriptures, your faith shall grow. And therefore he said that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. That he was buried and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. And the Bible clearly says he is risen according to the scripture. What the scripture was. The Lord Jesus, whatever he, was, he had spoken, those scriptures have spoken. And people have seen in all Galilee, in Judea, in Samaria, in Jerusalem, and in Bethlehem. His resurrection power was noticed. The resurrection, resurrected Jesus Christ of Nazareth was seen. And according to 1 Corinthians chapter 8, 15, verses 9 to 12, the Bible clearly says, and also Romans chapter 10, verses 9, the Bible says, believe that God raised Jesus Christ of Nazareth from his grave. Believe that God raised Jesus Christ of Nazareth from his tomb. Believe that God raised Jesus Christ of Nazareth from the dead. And you are saved when you believe it. Amen. Today it is a decision for every man and woman. You may make a decision. I will not do it like that. I will not do it like this. I will change myself. I will change my character. I will change my attitude. But it is not getting changed. People talk about attitude. People talk about their high mindedness. They talk about they know the scripture. They think that they are great preachers. But nothing is changed in their life. But tonight God is saying to you, remember the scriptures. And the scripture will be fulfilled. And the scripture will judge your soul and the soul of the preacher. The Bible clearly says, believe that the Lord Jesus was raised from the dead. Believe that the Lord Jesus was raised from the tomb. And believe that God raised Jesus Christ the knowledge from the dead. And when you believe, you shall be saved. If you don't have the scriptures, how you will believe? If you don't read the scriptures, how will you believe? When you don't hear the scriptures, how will you believe? Tonight, give importance to reading of the scripture, hearing of the scripture. So many families are not making good decisions because not knowing the scripture. So many husbands and wives are not making decisions because not knowing the scripture. Some say, I am a pastor. Some say, I am an evangelist. Some say, I am a leader in the church. Some say, I am a big man in the church. And I have all my of authority in the church. Church, and I'm a pastor and I'm so and so but if they don't know the word of God they will make a greatest mistake and you can see the testimony you can see the pastor's testimony how they live how they have their family life how they handle the finances whether they are running after silver gold luxury and luxury scarf whether they are running after souls you can notice and you'll be able to understand the Bible clearly says therefore every man must know the scriptures Every home must have the Holy Bible. Every brother and sister must have Jesus in their hearts. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 20 to 22. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. The Bible clearly says the first man, Adam and Eve, they were in Eden Garden. They brought sin into this world. They brought curses into this world. They brought sorrows into this world. They brought prey into this world. What or not, everything they brought, including the death. For as in Adam all died, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But the second man came, that is Jesus Christ of Lord, born out of Virgin Mary, conceived by the Holy of God, she gave birth to Jesus. And when Jesus came to this world, he died on the cross of Calvary for our sins. He was buried in the tomb because the scripture has to be fulfilled. He rose again on the third day and he is alive. And he has proved. What he has proved? The resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord proves that everyone who believes in him shall rise up again. This is not just a history. This is the truth. And the Roman government does not record anything that is not 
aligned with their thoughts, aligned with their principles. The Bible clearly says it is written forever in the history of Roman government. It is written forever in the history and the record of Roman government that Jesus who was crucified, died on the cross of Calvary, was buried, rose again on the third day, and he's alive, and he's risen. They have noticed and they have seen. My brothers, my sister, your faith must be revived today. You must have the living faith to believe the living Savior and have this faith start up today. Sometimes we become weak in our thoughts, in our character, in our attitudes. And when you read the scriptures of the resurrection, when you hear the message of the resurrection, your body, your spirit, and soul can be revived. How it is getting re re revived? It is getting revived by the scripture. It is getting revived by the word of God. It is getting revived by the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is getting revived by the Holy Spirit. It is getting revived by the power of God. It is getting revived by the Holy Spirit of Jesus. It is getting revived. And you are getting revived by the power of the Holy Spirit. And what he said? Yes, my Lord is alive. Jesus rose again from the grave. And he is risen. And Jesus is alive. The resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth is mentioned in all the four Gospels. The nature of this Gospel is nothing else but to prove every one of you the entire history, the entire life, and the entire truth of Jesus Christ our Lord. But it really says the nature of resurrection. The nature of resurrection is like that. Christ's resurrection was in a real body name. It was not simply said the spiritual he rose again, therefore he is risen. And this privilege is not there for you and I. When we die, our body is not going to rise up again, like Jesus rose again. How we are going to rise up again? With a glorious body. Nobody can see. When we die, we eat. Nobody sees where your soul is going, your spirit is going, where your glorious body is going. Nobody has noticed there. But the word of the Lord clearly says, but when Jesus died and rose again on the third day, everybody looked at him. Everybody touched him and they wanted to see who is this Jesus. The Bible clearly says the nature of resurrection of Jesus Christ is very true. It's real. It is in body and it's in flesh. Christ's resurrection was of a real in body, in flesh. And Jesus allowed the disciples to touch him. Jesus allowed them to eat. Jesus allowed them to come and gather with him and eat with him. And Jesus ate with his own hands from the disciples, fishes, breads, meat. The body says, his body was touched by many. Matthew chapter 28, verses, verse 9. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying, all hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. The Bible clearly says, read loudly, come on, shout out and read, yes. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying, Jesus. all hail. Yeah. And they came and held him by the They came and held him. They came and touched him. They touched his body. They touched his garment. They touched his wounded hands. They touched his side, which was pierced. And the word of the Lord clearly says, his body was touched by all the disciples, including Thomas Didymus, who closely touched him. It's mentioned in Matthew. It's mentioned in Luke, John, as well as all the Gospels. The Bible clearly says in Luke chapter 24, verse 30, Luke 24, verse 30, the Bible clearly says, And it came to pass, and he sat at meat with them. He took bread and blessed it, and break and gave it to them. My brothers and sisters, the Bible clearly says, he sat with the disciples, he ate with them, and he touched the bread, and he took it, and he ate. His resurrection was in the body. His resurrection was in the spirit. His resurrection was in the body, and in the bones, and in the flesh. Therefore, he was able to eat. He ate along with the disciples. Luke chapter 24. So also, you know, John chapter 21, all the scripture says. And the Bible clearly says, Jesus himself pointed out to that. A ghost does not have flesh and bones. Jesus himself said to the disciples. Luke chapter 24, verse 39. Behold, my hands and my feet, that it is I myself handle me, and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. The word of the Lord clearly says, he was explaining to them. I explain to you with a simple word, ghost. But the word of God says, Behold, my hands and my Behold feet, my hands. That it is I myself. It is me, I myself. Handle me. And see, 
For its spirit had not flesh. The spirit does not have flesh and bones. And I said to you in a simple English, that is called in, uh, English Standard Version, and it says the ghost does not have flesh. The spirit does not have flesh and bones, and uh, the flesh and bones you cannot touch if it is the spirit or ghost. And he said, you touch me, I'm not ghost, but I'm in the flesh and I'm in the bones. In Gospel of St. John chapter 20, the Bible clearly says, he appeared to many others in the locked room. He appeared to all the disciples. And in Luke chapter 21, verse 31, and he appeared and he vanished. The rooms were locked. He came in and he came out. How he came in and how he went out. The Bible says he was bodily present. He was bodily present, but Jesus could walk in. You must have seen many more movies like that. In the movies, when we say, this movie is very nice, it is so nice that all the things are, uh, buildings are locked, but the uh, Superman comes inside and also goes outside. But this story started 2022 years ago by Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes. Hallelujah! Yes. The, the story started 2022 years ago because our Lord Jesus came into the locked room and he went outside the locked room. When he came inside the locked room, all the 12 disciples were surprised. He was talking to them. He was very close to them. They could see the marks. They could see the marks. They could see his legs. They also, he also said, come and touch my sides. I was thinking whether he was very close or he was not very close. But what exactly is the thing? That when they took out his clothes, they told. And that's why the clothes that he was wearing, it was already told close. And they could notice his sign. The word of the Lord came and said, in locked rooms, the disciples saw him. And after that, disciples saw him getting vanished. And the Bible clearly said in Acts chapter 1, he ascended into heaven before the disciples could, could stand and gaze at him. They saw him. They saw him going up. My brothers, my sister, tonight your belief is great. Amen. Your belief is great. Yes. This children's belief that the parents are given is a great. They will never forget the resurrection of Jesus. Amen. You are training them and you are giving them the word of God, sending them in the front to glorify God. Surely they will be blessed. Special grace of God will be upon them. Because how Jesus appeared, when Jesus appeared, nobody can say about it. Because he comes to the locked room also. And the Bible says all the disciples gazed at him when he was ascended to heaven. Finally, remember the scriptures and never forget what the Bible says about 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 44. It is, it is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. The Bible clearly says when he died, it was a natural body. Lovely brother, still lovely. Come on, use all your strength. There is, there is a nat natural body, spiritual body. There are two types of bodies. The body that we are living in is a physical body, natural body. Then after the death when we are risen, it's called the spiritual body, glorious body, which you and I cannot see, only can understand later. It is sown a natural body, raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. The Bible clearly speaks. I can say like that the Paul wants to tell the church. What Paul wants to tell the church, he describes that Christ's body was imperishable body. But our body is perishable. When we die, our body becomes dust. And medical history science says like that, the day that you are buried, from that day, the dead, dead body starts smelling in the grave. And only the worms and the germs can understand that smell. They try to come from all around the earth, beneath the earth, and they start eating the body. After the third day, this body started eating faster because all the worms and the germs gathered there. And the fourth day, the foul smell comes. Remember, Lazarus was dead and Martha Mary said, don't go to the grave, Jesus. Four days are passed. Three days are over. Fourth day is running. You may get a foul smell. He said, let us go to the grave. My brothers, my sister, medical science declares that on the fourth day, all the worms and the germs start eating the body. After that, the flesh started becoming dust. And after a few days, what exactly happens? The same body, the tummy gets blasted up. Then after that, what happens? Everything starts becoming dust, dust, dust. And within three months of time, the entire body becomes dust and the bones get separated. Bones remain like that. And the bone gets start dissolving after six months of time. I do not know. We are going to get some doctors you know, very soon in our church services. Probably they will describe you more. The Bible clearly says, Paul said to the church of Corinth, the 
the body that we have is perishable. Perishable. It will be eaten by one germs when we are dead and buried in the grave. But Jesus' body was not touched. Though he rose again on the third day, his body was imperishable. It was perfect. No germs, no worms touched his body. Neither any clothes were eaten by the worms and the germs. And the Bible says, especially Paul describes that Christ's body was imperishable. Glorious body, powerful body, incorruptible body, immortal body. And finally he says, victorious body, Amen. victorious body. Amen. That body has victory. Anybody touches that body will have the victory. Whoever, whoever takes his name will have a victory in their life. They will be victorious because the body of Jesus Christ of Nazareth is imperishable, glorious, also powerful incorruptible, immortal, and victorious. Say after me, victorious, victorious. Body, of Jesus, body of Jesus, in whom we believe. Whom we believe. He, died he died for us, rose again on the third day. On the third day. Jesus, is Jesus is alive. He is risen. He is risen. Jesus, is alive. Jesus is alive. Come on, one more time. Jesus is risen. Jesus is risen. He is alive. Finally, remember the nine important points that the, 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 the first Corinthians and sixth Corinthians says about. I just want to read, instead of reading the scriptures, I just want to tell you what exactly the Bible says. Finally, finally the Bible says, remember the nine points. Especially Paul says, remember the nine points. And he was preaching these nine points to all the churches. What did he say? On one, on one wonderful day, Jesus Christ will return to this earth again. He said he's going to come back. How many of you believe of his coming again? Amen. That is your hope. That is our hope. If you have seen the resurrection, you will see his coming back. Amen. 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 If you have not believed the resurrection, you cannot see his coming back. But when you believe his resurrection, you can see his coming back. Amen. The second point, the Bible says, not as a babe in manger, but revealing himself and to the entire world who really he is. He is the judge. He is the king. He is the king of kings. He is the living and living God and savior of the entire world. The third point the Bible says, the one who was nailed on the cross, but the nail could not keep him there. The one who was buried in the tomb, and the tomb could not hold him there. The one, the nails, and the tomb could not hold him. He rose again. The Bible says, he was dead, and he was lying in the grave for three full days. And on the first day of the week, he rose again. And he rose again and he proved his resurrection. Ladies saw, apostles saw, 500 people noticed that. And the Bible clearly says, when he rose again on the third day, he was having that glorious, imperishable body and flesh. And everybody could say, he was crucified, but now he is alive. The sixth, the glorious God, the glorious ruler of this creation, and also the judge of the living and the dead. And again, King of kings and the Lord of gods, an everlasting God, an everlasting one, who was yesterday, who is today, who is going to be? Who is going to be? And what is his name? Jesus. His name is Jesus. Jesus. Now therefore the Bible clearly says, now those who believe in Jesus Christ of Nazareth will be raised from the dead. Amen. You believe in the name of Jesus, and you believe in the life Jesus Christ of Nazareth gave it to us, the Bible clearly says, now those who believe in Jesus, and when they die, they will rise up again. And finally, those who do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth will be condemned, will be damned forever. Mark chapter 15, verse 15 and 16. The Bible says, but those who do not believe in Jesus Christ of Nazareth will be condemned, will be damned. And what is our duty today after knowing this resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord? We shall believe. Say after me. We shall believe. We shall believe that he is risen. 
sin. He's risen. He's risen. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. He died for me. He died for me. He died for my sins. He died for my sins. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. He's risen from the dead. He's risen from the dead. I believe in him. I believe in him. I believe in him. I will read the scripture. I read the scripture. Continuously I will believe in him. Continuously I believe in him. He's my Lord. Jesus is the Lord of Lords. Jesus is the Lord of Lords. King of Kings. King of Kings. My Lord. My Lord. My King. My King. For now. For now. For now. For now. And forever and ever. And forever and ever. Shout Amen. 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 Yes, Jesus Christ was dead, but rose again on the third day. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is alive. Simply know this is the proof. Amen. If anybody wants to know the proof, this is the proof. Religion may fail, people may fail, preachers will die, but this will never die. Amen. The Bible clearly says, What is the proof? The proof is the word of God. Proof is the Holy Bible. He is risen and he is not dead. He rose again and he is going to live forever. Yes, our Lord Jesus lives. He is risen, he is alive. Amen. He is alive. This is an important time. Try not to move here and there. Try to understand the scriptures. That the scriptures surely says to every one of you, those who want to partake into this holy communion, confess and repent. Examine your heart, mind and body. Whatever sins I have committed, we have committed, we are going to ask the Lord to forgive us. Confess because the Lord is in the midst of us. He will love us more. He will look at us that we don't hide anything from him. And we are an open book for him to read everything that I do and we do. This will be so nice to tell him everything. Peter explained to Jesus that he denied three times. Judas did not go to Jesus. He went to the high priest and Pharisees and some of the priests in the church. And he went and he started confessing. The Bible says he repented. Gospel of St. John chapter 12. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. They, they, they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment and spike not, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the adobe of the ointment. Then says one of his disciples, and his name is Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pieces and given to the poor? 300, okay. Then this he said, not that he gave for the poor, but because he was a... Read the scripture. Because he was a thief and had a bag. What bag? Offering bags. God is recording if I am robbing. God is recording if you are robbing the offerings. The Bible says God was recording. Jesus was recording about him. He carried the treasury. He carried the offering bags. And he was a thief. Why he was called thief? He was carrying the bag and robbing. And where? What was put therein? The Bible said, then Jesus said, let us alone against thee, against the day of my burying, had she kept this. For the poor always you have with you, but me you have not always. 
Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there and they came not for Jesus sake only but that they might see Lazarus also whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priest consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death. See they wanted to put Jesus along with Lazarus because he was a great witness of resurrection. Persecution, trial and tribulation will be dead for you. And my brother is my sister, but God regards my life and your life very well. And therefore it is better when we are at this table, we have to ask God to forgive us. He will surely forgive you and I when we confess our sins. How many times we are not come for fellowship? How many times I have to tell you, come, come, come for fellowship? Bible says if you don't come fellowship for fellowship, you are breaking the Sabbath day. You have already broken the law. Not because I want you to be in the church. But you broke the law of God. Commandment of God. Will Jesus be happy? Tonight we have to confess everything. Our mistakes, our sins will remain like that and God will not be happy. Jesus who rose again, who died for our sins will not be happy. Tonight we will happily tell him everything that what we have done. Two minutes we are going to close our eyes. We are going to bow down in the presence of God. I am going to lead you. Don't repeat anything. Close your eyes, bow down in the presence of God. Loving Father, we all confess our weaknesses and sins. Forgive us if we have lied. Forgive us if we have robbed anything. Forgive us if we have committed sin. Forgive us if we have committed any sexual sin. Forgive us if we have committed sin of adultery. Forgive us if we have committed any other thing not coming to the fellowship the Sabbath day if we are broken. Help us not to hate anybody you say, but we have committed murder in hating others. In the church we hate people, Lord. Please forgive us. Our homes, our relatives, our friends circle, to whomever we hate it, we confess that you forgive us. We have committed murder in our hearts and we don't want to continue. Lord, we pray every manner of sin we bring before you. Please hear our heartbeat. Read our mind. And please forgive all my sins and our sins. And we shall be cleansed, washed and sanctified by the blood that you shed on the cross. And when we partake into this holy communion, tonight the resurrection power of Jesus shall give the blessings to every brother, every sister, every home shall be blessed, every father, mother shall be blessed, every marriage shall be blessed, every covenanted brother, sister shall be blessed. Every one shall receive the blessings of God, and the church shall be blessed. In Jesus' almighty name, we confess and pray. Amen. And let's all say, Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord clearly says, For I have received of the law, that which also I gave unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, Take. Eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he also took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is in the New Testament. After the same manner, also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do it as often as you drink it. As often as you. Every fellowship come, have the fellowship, have the breaking of the bread, holy communion, receive the bliss of God, health and healing, and long life blessings of God. When we die, we shall rise up again. This is that remembrance that we have to do it because Jesus has said unto you, every one of you. Every scripture reading that is done by the ashes, and every scripture reading that was done during these days of time, I would like to tell you prayerfully. Remember, you are chosen by the Lord. Amen. You have been called out by the Lord. Amen. Start reading the scriptures for yourself and for your families. Every manner of future blessings and all manner of blessings will surely come. Amen. This body is not a normal body. You have seen this body is immortal. This body is glorious. This body is powerful. This body saves the soul. This body gives us the resurrection. And therefore, remembering all that, when you partake into this body, you shall be able to understand, I'm going to obtain all these blessings. 
and do not forget what God has said, which is said it is written forever. This is going to be the blessing to our generation to generation. Amen. Nothing will be deleted from this book. So tonight I request and all of you, those who are children here singing, and all those who have read the scriptures for all these four five days. So also all these ushers, those who labor and come in time, and all the media team, and all the worship team, I sincerely thank you for your great labor for the Lord. The reason Savior is watching you is going to bless you. And this is that final blessing which is going to come to you and your homes when you partake into the body of Christ. Tonight you are touching Jesus with your hands. You are touching his nature's hands and saying to the Lord, thank you for what you have done for me. You are going to remember all that he has done on the cross of Calvary when he was in agony and pain and in sorrow. When you are receiving this body of Christ, you are going to say, Lord, my body is going to be imperishable. It's going to be a glorious. It's going to be powerful, incorruptible, immortal. And I will receive it because of your victory. I will die, but I will rise up again on the third day because you are risen. Lord, risen. You are risen. You are risen. And he is alive. Tonight you are holding him and holding his body in your hands and receiving this body in your body. Receiving his blood in your body. Surely God is going to restore a great blessing of God in you. My brothers, my sister, everything he gives to you, don't forget the fellowship. Don't forget the fellowship. It's not to count the numbers. But it is your relationship with the Lord to continue. I'm reminding you again. Be believer. Don't be religious. Religious person cannot go to heaven. Be a believer. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and other. The Bible says all those who believe will be saved. And those who do not believe will be condemned. Tonight make a good decision. Lord, I'm holding your body. I'm going to have your blood and I make a decision. Then I will believe in you completely. You are a risen Lord and risen Savior. I believe in you completely. And when I believe, I will receive your healing, your blessing, and your victory in my life. In Jesus' almighty name we pray. Amen. Receive the body of Christ first. Last night I was talking to one of the brothers who questioned about his death and when he rose again, how was his blood and how he shed the blood and how he went to the heavenly places. My brothers, my sister, remember, every answer you have from the Bible, Bible gave you the answer that bodily he was present. His marks of all wounds were there on his body. Thomas Dilimius could check his wounds on his right hand and left hand and on the side. Probably disciples must have seen his open body when he must have shown his back and front. Remembering that he shed all the blood of the cross of Calvary. When you are partaking into this blood, remember my blood shall be totally pure because of the blood of Jesus. I shall have no defect in my blood. And when I receive the blood of Jesus, every organ shall receive life. Say Amen. amen. My body shall receive life. Amen. My body shall receive life. Amen. My organ shall receive life. Amen. I shall have life. Amen. On the earth Amen. and life eternal. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We believe and pray. Amen. Believe tonight. This is his shed blood. This is an ordinary juice. Not even wine. But when you believe, it is going to happen. Remember your weaknesses in your body. Remember your sicknesses in your body. Remember all the troubles that you have from your body. Whatever headaches, sinus problems. Unwanted headaches, throat infections, throat pain. Somebody, those who have thyroid tonight, God is going to heal them. Amen. And those who have nodules in their bodies, so also chest pain, lungs problem, lung infection, intestine problem, intestine infection. All my life infections are going to be burned. Amen. Your lungs are going to be pure, Amen. perfect. Amen. No trace of any evil. 
All cancerous cells are going to be washed. Amen. You are going to get healing to your, your heart, yes. your kidneys, yes. your liver. Yes. All parts of the body will be revived tonight. Yes. Because Jesus is alive. Because Jesus is alive. Because Jesus is alive. Let's all partake it with the cup of the Lord together. In Jesus' name, amen. Tomorrow I'll be able to face everything. Today's day is wonderful. We do not know what tomorrow's day will be in our lives. But we are going to believe that Jesus is alive. He will keep me safe. He will protect me. He will bless me. Because he lives. Amen. Hallelujah. I can
we thank you for your word. Let the peace of Jesus Christ tonight rule everybody's heart, mind, and body. I'm going to read the final scripture for benediction. Jude chapter 1, verse 24 and 25. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before, before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. For the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever and ever. Amen. May the love of God the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and fellowship of the Holy Spirit of God be with us, now and forever and ever. Amen. From the church and from the entire worship team and their families, wish you very happy and resurrection power of Jesus Christ our Lord. May God bless every one of you and greetings to everyone from my family to your family.